All right, back here at Ohika Castle and have my second live guest of the day. He doesn't know this, but I'm a big fan of this guy. His name is Doug Marone. He used to coach the Bills and the Jaguars and Syracuse and up in Cortland. Now he's with the New Orleans Saints. And you may not know this, Doug, but I started my radio career in New York on WFAN, a big sports guy. I was on the show in between Imus and Mike and the Mad Dog. Yeah, I remember it. And I went from talking about Drew Brees. Now I talk to guys like Steve Scalise <laughs> and Kennedy, all your politicians yeah. in Louisiana. Yeah. But I can still talk a little football, trust me. And I do that quite a bit on this show, even though we're, for the most awesome. part, politics and news. So it's great to see you. How are you? I'm doing great. I yeah. really am. I'm, I'm excited. You know, this is a – you don't have – you know, you have this window where you have a, a break, you know, for the NFL, and you have a couple of weeks. And, you know, my kids were, were small at the time, so I spent a lot of time with them. But, you know, now that they're all on their way to college, you know, my wife and I were able to get out here and see some friends out in Sag Harbor, the other, you know, the other nice. day. And then, you know, working away, and it's, you know, it's kind of like coming back home for me. Well, it is. Uh, you know, for some reason, I know you coached at Syracuse. Yeah. You played there, too, but I thought you lived – in upstate New York, but you're telling me you're a Bronx guy, huh? Yeah, I'm as far east in the Bronx as you can get. I mean, the next stop, you're, you're in the Long Island Sound. So, wow. You know, so I always had a great view of uh, the North Shore. We were kids. We used to take the boats out there and just look at all those people and say, oh, you know, maybe one day. So what, <laughs> I don't get it. So you did the Jaguars, the Bills. You're in New Orleans now. Mm-hmm. Bronx guy. You love Long Island. You're golfing in Huntington today. When is Doug Marone going to work for the Jets or the Giants? I, well, I actually started um, – the first time in the, NFL, in the NFL, my first job was with the Jets. Jets. Yeah, and it was, it was, it was great. I mean, it was with Herm Edwards. Um, we had a really good team. I mean, we had a lot of veteran guys. Uh, you know, I love the guys I played with. We, were all, we all got together with, last time I saw everybody when uh, Kevin Mawai was in, oh, yeah. in the Hall of Fame. So, yeah. Yeah, so I had the, you know, you know like I always say, I, didn't, I had the ability to work with Kevin. You know, That's so pretty I, cool. Yeah. He so was, was a nice, was, nice player. Good guy. We yeah. had some really good players, really good teams, and, you know, till this day, I, I tell people, people like Curtis Martin. And, oh. I mean, you just can't get, you know, you, you look at football players today and you try to explain to some players, hey, listen, this is what, you know, a pro really yeah. looks like and does. He's a Not great the same. example of that. Curtis Martin, and he grew up in a rough area in, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I became a superstar in Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. I, I actually did radio for years with Scott Kaplan. He kicked on that team with Curtis, Alex Van Pelt, all yeah. those guys. Mm-hmm. So I knew Curtis very, very well. Christian man, you never knew if he rushed for a thousand yards or a hundred, and was very willing to listen to Bill Parcells or Herm Edwards or anybody. The players today, I don't want to get into it because you're still a coach, uh, but not nearly the same, Doug. Yeah, not nearly I, the same. I mean, Curtis will go. I mean, you know, sometimes, you know, let's say the run game's not working, or or I, I can remember this, and I tell people a story all the time. I mean, one time we let a guy through, and hit, they hit Curtis about three yards behind the line of scrimmage. You know, and and I'm thinking, you know, and Curtis, you know, he just gets up and goes, he comes over to the sideline. It didn't happen much because we wound up. He wound up leading the league in rushing. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah I'll never forget. He, he went over to the line, and you know how some some people be like, "Hey, you guys got to do this and get this," you know, and, and really yell. He's just like, "Hey, guys, look, just cover him up. I got the rest of it. We'll be fine." He was we'll, cool. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it was like, like uh, Chevy yeah. Chase in those movies when uh, he kept running over the English guy, he broke his leg, broke his arm. He's like, "No, thank you, thank you. It's good yeah. to see you." That's Curtis Martin. Uh, this Saints team this year is interesting. Dennis yeah. Allen, of course, mm-hmm. is the head coach or the offensive line coach. Yep. But uh, after all those years of Sean Payton now going to Denver, that's a big deal. Uh, we'll see if he can revive Russell Wilson this year. But all those years of Payton and Breeze and all that success has not been a great run the last couple of years. Now, I know you had yeah. Jameis Winston, but now you bring in the former Raider, Derek Carr. What does that mean to the Saints yeah. offense? I'll tell you what. I mean, really for the team, not just on the offense. I think you see a different vibe. You see a different energy, you know, from, the, from everyone, you know, in your Because of Derek, you think? Because, because of Derek. Yeah. And I think that... You know, we're excited about that. We, we, we feel good. We had a um, really good, you know, the OTAs, the, the veteran minicamp and getting everyone back. So um, it, it, was, it, it's, it is different, obviously. I mean, I was there in the beginning with Sean in 06. Um, this is my third time back there. I played there in 89. And, um, and, and, and I think it's a, it's a sense of, 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 of excitement. And, and this is. has done a really good job of, of bringing this team together. It's a close team. It's a, it's a veteran team. And um, the players care about each other. The locker room is awesome. The culture there is great. And I think when you have that, it, it's not saying it's not guaranteeing you you're going to win, but it's giving you an opportunity and a chance to win. So what is it like for you? I'm always curious. Uh, and I know a lot of guys sure. who play in the NFL, coach in the NFL. I know them all. Even though I'm out of sports talk radio, a little yeah. bit of time now. I've maintained all these friendships. And I always ask these coaches, and they're the, the, the guy. You were the guy in Jacksonville. You were the yeah. guy in Buffalo. Mm-hmm. Now you're a line coach again. Yeah. It's really a two-tier question. A, is it difficult to go back and be 
just a coach and not the head coach? And B, ideally, does Doug Marone want to be a head coach again? Well, I think I think when you look at it, I, I look at it as that, you know, this is how – this is what, what I – what I was in the beginning, you know what I'm right. saying? I, I mean, I wanted to be a line coach. I wanted to be the best line coach out there and, and focus on it. I think as you, as you go and you move up, you know, there's a lot of things that go on. I've, I've been fortunate enough to be a head coach in the NFL and in college. And I actually went back to college two years ago. I went to the University of Alabama, you know, thinking that, hey, listen, I'm going to go back to college and get a job somewhere in the Northeast and be a head coach. And, and then the NIL hit. And I was like, hmm. That's, yeah, you know, that's, yeah, that's a little, <laughs> yeah. That, was, uh, that, 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 that was a little, that was a little tough for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seeing, not, and it wasn't tough from a standpoint of like, listen, if they can get some, I get that part. I'm, I'm okay with that. But the point of like, it just started to change. It became, you know, I, I'm a little bit more old school in how I think about. Hey, listen, I went to a college because I love the campus. I love the teachers. I love the networking. I, I you know, I, I went there for. You know, fo- yes, football was a big part of it, but there was also another part. Yeah. You know, and, and now you go in there and it's like, it's like, if, I'm like, if you're going to start paying everyone, I might as well go back to the NFL. Yeah. Pay, <laughs> yeah. pay uh, uh, no, but it's true. And, and of course, you went to Syracuse and they had some great teams yeah. in those mm-hmm. years. But a couple more minutes to go here. College football now seems so top heavy. Like, you know, every year Nick's going to have a great team at yeah. Alabama. You know, Dable is going to have a great team at Clemson. Mm-hmm. And you know, certainly Georgia, they're the cream of the crop these days. The Bulldogs are going to be great. And it's kind of like, you know, Nadal, Federer, and, uh, and Jokovic. You know, you yeah. got your top, top three, yeah. and then good luck to the rest of these universities. I went to Miami. I was yeah. there. You want to know the four quarterbacks when I was there? You ready for this? Uh, Jim Vinny. Kelly. Uh, yeah. Vinny Testaverde, mm-hmm. Bernie Kosar, and Mark Richt. Yeah. I was there for Howard Schnellenberger. Those are the four quarterbacks on the roster. That's over now in Miami. It's done. Yeah, but, I mean, you got to have a little bit more faith in your alma mater. I mean, oh, I, I have no faith. <laughs> no faith. Zero. Donna came in. God I'll bless what, her. NIL now. Though. You can take I the know. money you make here. You can give it yeah, to the University of Miami. <laughs> right, start, right. You know, and then Look, you can get that quarterback. Uh, maybe. But, <laughs> see, what happened was Donna came in, and she started worrying about academics. And I hate to tell you, but if you want to win football games in college, you really want morons. You don't want smart kids. I, don't want, I hate uh, to put it that yeah. way. But, <laughs> that's, 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 but, no, but it's true. All of a sudden... The guys are getting better grades and losing football games. There's not, you're going to tell me there's nothing to that, Doug? I, 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 would, I would hope that we live in a better world where you can get both. I yeah, really but do. I know you would hope yeah, that, but yeah. the real world, that doesn't exist. Well, we were I, taking kids from, from Liberty City who could never graduate a class, but then go out there and catch 10 passes for 200 yards. Yeah, yeah. No? I, I, See, you listen. can't say that because Goodell will find you right now if he's listening. No, <laughs> no, no, it's not that. It's just that, I mean, if that's our, if that's our faith in, in what we do, then I think that's... that's you know, it might be practical. You might be, it might be truth, you right. know, in some occasions, but you know, I, I tend to be more of a, you know, I have more faith in it. Yeah. I, I think, I think you can take someone from Liberty city. I've done it when I was at Syracuse, you can take these kids from the, that really never had an opportunity, create an opportunity for them. And some of these kids will jump at it and better themselves. And I think that's what it's all about. It's like, you know, being together, the people that'll be here, we all didn't come from, you know, we didn't have it all, everything given to no, us. No, I know. Sure, and, sure. You know, you yourself the same way. Yeah. So I think I think that there's still that thing in America that you can do that, and and, and it might not be the, the stories that are getting written now, but there'll be stories about people like that, and that's one thing that I have faith in. I have faith in what we do, you know, despite yeah. what you do for a living, talking about all the politics. That <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've never been more confused in my life. Yeah. yeah. No, it's it's confusing, yeah. and and that's why you're a great coach and a leader of men because you do. Offer that optimism, and mm-hmm. it's not just optimism. There was a lot of truth to what you're saying, yeah. and like you said, me, I, yeah. uh, it's all pessimism. Yeah. I talk about all this horrible <laughs> stuff, and the Mets, who are a terrible baseball team. That's my team. Well, well, listen, a Yankee uh, guy. Yeah, are you a, uh, you're a Yankee fan? You're from born, the Bronx. Listen, uh, I was born a Yankee fan. There's a difference. People become fans. I was born. My grandfather worked there for twenty something years. Wow, greatest experience. I won the two pinstripe bowls. You did? And, yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. And um, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, it was it was. I was able to stand in the middle of Yankee Stadium, and I, I remember I forgot I was crying when I accepted uh-huh. the trophy and it echoes and uh-huh. all I thought about was the, you know the Luke Gehrig story yeah. you know what yeah. I'm saying when he gets yeah, up there and talk, it was it, that part of like that's the journey of hey here's a kid that grew up in the Bronx that no one thought would go to college or do anything and next thing you know I'm, I'm standing I'm like this is unbelievable wow you know, good so for you. good well good. you're a very impressive man yeah. you really are you've had a great it. career you, you continue good luck in New Orleans this season yeah. with the Saints come on down and visit uh, absolutely I <laughs> yeah. love football games down yeah. there man who dat who dat out there and Louisiana land. That's uh, Doug Barone, everybody, NFL head coach and NFL offensive line coach for the New Orleans Saints right now. We'll take a short break. More of me, Sid Rosenberg, live at Ohika Castle.